Yeah, I got it too. I went over and hung out with Mike on Saturday. First, we rode e-bikes. <laughs> yes, I love it. It was, it, was a, it was a blast. And then we went over and uh, he showed me what he's been working on with biochar. So um, he sent me home with a little package. It was great. Uh, uh, wait, Mike, you have an e-bike? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I, I, uh, I love it. But I said one of the biggest challenges is parking and security because oh, yeah. you, I mean I don't dare leave it out on the sidewalk and go into a store so I mean it's something to think about and then it's it's neither uh, foul or beast because it's not really a bicycle and it's not really a motorcycle so there's there's some clarification that I think has to evolve in terms of etiquette safety uh It'll come, but uh, it's it's an unanticipated challenge, I think. Yeah, I think it was Rachel um, Paulia who had the idea of like secure, increased secured bike um, shelters for Englewood. And I had reached out to RTD about that because I thought it was such a good idea. And they sent me kind of like information, hey, Tiana, on what yeah. those could look like. And they are really cool, but some of them are very pricey. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, anyways they're a lot of fun they're cool and so is it this saturday is the ev meeting at nixon's yeah we have oh my gosh the time between now and the end of april there's actually a lot of events so there's one this saturday so it's the ev event and people can come and give comment on the draft ev action plan we wanted like an in-person and virtual option for folks um and there's one on april 8th at broken tea and then um hopefully we're gonna have more information about earth day tomorrow actually that has been a, a thorn in my side but hopefully we'll have something for Earth Day <laughs> then too <laughs> but are you all just so you all know you do have quorum now that tiana's here so Wonderful. i'll kind of sit back thank you me. tiana well, if we can call the meeting to order and uh both logan and mel uh, coach me. Hi, Tiana. Thank you for hey. coming up. Um, don't be afraid to rope me in or coach me on on running a meeting. Uh, you won't hurt my feelings at all. So, um, oh, the one comment. So sorry, Tiana. Sure. Just so you know, because you help make um, quorum for today, you are a voting member. Um, so your votes do count. Just so you know. Great. Nice. You, you saved us. <laughs> Thank you, um, Tiana. OK, so I'd like to call a meeting to order, and I think we probably need to take roll, correct? Yep. So, Rick, why don't we start with you, and we'll just go around the screen here. All right, Rick Emil Heinz, member here. Logan Dunning, present. Christine Brinker, present. Tiana? Tiana, Tiana Duncan, present. Okay. Michael Chisholm, um, present. Present. OK, <clears throat> OK, well, we have uh, sort of a one item agenda tonight, and I hope everybody has read through some of the materials. And if I can just recap my understanding and I trust all of you will uh, will join in uh, at our last meeting, we had some discussions about the uh, recommendations uh, coming from the city departments relating to some of the uh, proposed guidelines, recommendations. Uh, uh, I say, how how green do we want to be? Christine's done a lot of work on understanding it, and I will defer a lot of this to you, Christine. You're the content expert. But from my point of view, it seems like the Sustainability Council uh, ought to have an opinion, and we ought to have a consensus, and we ought to communicate clearly to City Council what our thoughts are. Uh, I have some thoughts, but I'll hold back. And so I would throw it open to anyone who'd like to to speak and share their thoughts. So we got a response from um, the city on some of our questions. Is that accurate? Karen, Karen yep. responded, yeah. Karen responded. So I would ask Christine or the group to maybe recap. Karen's response to our inquiries and whether or not um, we need to adjust the memo based off of that. Okay. 
Chris, Christine dropped out. <laughs> there wow, she is. I wonder where she is. <laughs> we were talking about you, Christine. <laughs> All right, daughter called. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Logan. Maybe finish your oh, sentence. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I sort of commissioned Christine on that one, and then she fell off. I just said, if Christine or the group, since since Karen responded to us, if we could kind of quickly recap w her response to our inquiries and whether or not our concerns were addressed, what's outstanding, and if we need to adjust the memo in any particular way, or if we still want to push back, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I'm still a bit confused about what of our memo would still be necessary or not, or if we just still send the whole thing and that way the council would know that we have been engaged throughout the process, so to speak, or at least the past uh -huh. few weeks, um, uh, even if some of these minor things get changed, um, and then we can also make sure we have a record in case for some reason they don't get changed or something gets lost in translation. Um, so the building official responded back and said most of these seem minor and definitional and or small tweaks and they seem acceptable uh, pertaining to um, to family buildings three stories or under and so we wrote back just to clarify what about multifamily buildings six stories and over because that was also a gap and it seemed like she said that that um was okay that sh that um she was okay with that with those changes as well um okay. she didn't answer about our small change about the multifamily to um move it from 10% to 15% for EV charging. Um, I'm hoping that that's part of what she just said. Um, um, the small tweaks seem acceptable, hoping that it's grouped in with there, but she didn't specifically um, call that out. Um, the, major, the major piece was making sure that electric ready was included. Can you brief me on whether or not that was addressed? Um, I can, it Christine, sounded mind. like, yeah, can, do you want to read what she wrote to make sure I don't misinterpret it? Yeah, so it? I just want to say that Karen has been awesome. She has had such a fast response time. It's just been really, really great. Um, she's out of office for the later half of this day, which is why she couldn't make it. Um, so we, Christine had some follow-up questions um, that I relayed to her to see if she could get them back for today, and she did because she's a superstar. And um, she said that, one of the questions was just clarity on if the building division was okay with proposing electric ready for the code cycle. Um, and in her words, which it makes sense, she said with council approval, which all of this has to get council approval, staff would include electric electric ready requirements. But but not electric preferred, as I understand. Is that correct? The so, question posed to her was just proposing electric ready. And so okay. she said that she would include electric ready. And electric ready was what was missing and what would bring us up to that minimum standard and qualify us for all of the funding. Is that accurate? Okay. Right. And we've had two rounds of comments back from Karen, the building official. And, and so that's why it might be confusing. But our first response back said, um, uh, no to electric preferred, maybe the next round, um, because basically small steps at a time um it it still seems worth it to include it in our memo just to show that we want to continue pushing and then also to show that electric ready itself is quite minor you know if you show the next step then it it makes that that step not seem not quite so big um so i think we could still leave it in there as a suggestion just to make sure it stays on council's radar although recognizing that the building division won't be proposing it or necessarily supporting it this round um but from what that we, we can tell it. she would be okay supporting electric ready requirements it's still not clear if she would put that into the march 27th study session materials um or if our memo here would provide double that. Okay. Uh, it, it's 
it says to me that there's still value in us saying what we mean and meaning what we say. It seems like there's a parlay going on between who's approving or recommending. To my way of thinking, Sustainability Commission makes a recommendation. Whether the department agrees with that recommendation is not our concern. I think this is our opportunity to put something on the record that we, the Sustainability Commission, believe or support. So I got confused in reading uh, her response, thinking we're not asking for Karen's permission to put anything in. We are telegraphing to her what we intend to put in. So really, we extended a courtesy to her, and that's all well and good. Um, I'll just finish my thought. I wrote a note to myself, and it has to do with the tone and the tenor of the communication between us, the city, and Karen. Um, she said uh, uh, she's concerned that uh, the amendment on universal charging stations might conflict with code next, and that this planning process, now I'm saying, wait a minute, this is a dynamic planning process. For us, <laughs> It doesn't make sense to me that our recommendations or thoughts would conflict with anything. She said parking requirements, uh, or I'm saying parking requirements should be considered early on in the process. And um, our amendment only presents a, a reasonable design consideration. So, so again, who's asking for permission? I mean, I just think we're communicating honestly. And I, and I feel like um, under the green cone amendments, um, uh, she's talking about what's convenient or inconvenient to de uh, community development and planning. That's not the issue. I mean, the city, the city council and, and the citizens put forth recommendations and those are design parameters the department responds to those design parameters. So I know I feel like we're chasing our tail somewhat, and I don't want to do that. So I guess I feel strongly that um, that you know any discrepancies between what we recommend and what the department thinks or whatever, um, they should be presented in a proactive manner, and the sooner those are talked about and considered, the better. So in other words, don't wait for the problem and then ask the department to fix the problem, anticipate. So my whole thing is I want Sustainability Commission to be proactive, throw our recommendations out in front, and let the department say what they will about our recommendations. Agreed. So anyways, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Mike, I think you, you said a lot there, and I, I think that from the head nods I'm seeing on the screen, I think we all kind of agree that, you know, we, we need to be we need to be at the front of this in terms of how we present things. Uh, Christine did a bang up job on, on putting Wonderful. that together uh, and uh, the fact that that uh, Karen has responded, I think, like you said, Mel, it's 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 a good sign that she's engaged and she wants to be responsive and carry on a conversation with it. But as far as our actual present, uh, you know, uh, memo to them, I say we we don't change anything. I think we we let them know where we stand on this. Mm -hmm. We are a citizen group. We do represent the citizens of the city. <clears throat> And I agree with you, Mike, in the sentiment that we should be the ones forward thinking um, and anticipating. And that's reflected in this memo. Um, whether or not the city or the departments want to drag their feet, to be frank, that's that's outside of our control. But we can offer what we have vetted, discussed, and ultimately recommend. And I think that that's what this memo does. And so I, I would be in agreement that we move forward with the memo as written and probably my thoughts on proactive versus reactive don't need to be put in writing to anybody but i think amongst us i just i want to share that with you if we can push if we can push the edge a little bit and you know prod them in the rear end a little bit i think we should 
and I've got thick skin. I mean, I, I don't think we're doing anything radical at all. I think we're just <laughs> speaking reasonably. And I'm surprised that there's any disagreement on that. So um, I have a question. Go ahead. <clears throat> when Karen says it runs contrary to code next, is does she is she referencing current city statute or is it she referencing the ongoing process that of code next currently? Great question. I'm going to ask some clear. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I think it I mean, could these be. processes are dynamic, so the conversations are ongoing. So I don't know that code next has put anything forth to conflict with. <laughs> I mean, another Christine, point is that it's, uh, <coughs> it's mathematically impossible to conflict with it because code next uh, now and in their future version will set some sort of parking requirements based on building size, location, building type, et cetera. And the EV requirements are a percentage of that parking. Right. And then the universal spaces in turn are a percentage of those EV spaces. And so there's there's no way mathematically that, that the subset could be bigger than the whole set. <laughs> and, I think that just and, and I wonder if, if that's ahead. unclear, um, we could add a, a sentence essentially explaining um, we recognize that parking minimums are under discussion as part of the code next, but we don't for, we don't foresee any conflict between the two because uh, such and such because they're a subset. Would that would that help maybe cut off some of the confusion? Or she might have had that point of confusion. Maybe city council might as well. I'm fine with that. I I, I think uh, if if we need to add that quick amendment, that's fine. Um, I do have about five minutes, um, okay. seven minutes before I, I have to hop on another meeting, but um, don't want to rush this. So uh, I I'm I think the the conclusion is um, we submit we go forward with the current memo, and if we need to have add a clarifying amendment toward the end that Christine just laid out, that's fine. Um, but I don't think we dial it back by any means. Okay. I think. Um, I don't, uh, Christine, you can speak to this better than anybody because you're on the code me next steering yeah. committee. But I, I can't imagine that, you know, that anything is, is so set in stone right now with code next that, that they can't at least, you know, look at this as a piece of that. And, and like you said, if it's a percentage of a percentage, then, you know, it's still going to be there. So right. yeah, I'd, I would encourage you to put a, a line in there clarifying that a little bit, maybe. I just want to uh, flag if Logan is leaving in five, he does make quorum and you guys can't vote without him being here. So if you do want to vote I'm, anything, I'm, you yeah, just gonna, have to I'm be gonna, it's, a six, so it's a 630. But, uh, Keanu, I, I know you're the new kid on the block and I don't want to put you on the spot, but please offer your thoughts, questions. Uh, are, are we making sense to you? And what, what's, what's your gut telling you? Um, yeah, no, I'm agreeing with most of what you guys are saying or all of what you guys are saying. I think that things shouldn't be um, taken out because they ask us not to consider it right now. <laughs> um, I think it's still worth talking about and putting it on the record that we want them. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> For sure, yeah. Exactly what I was trying to say. Well, in the interest of time, and, and, and thank you, Logan, you're right. Um, I, I'm asking a group, can we bring it to a vote? All, all of Sorry, just for clarity, are you voting with the amendment or voting on the memo as is? That's all I need clarity on. Uh, I let's would, start with the amendment I as add, is. Or what's the group feel? Uh, I, I would I, add I would. another amendment that came up uh, from Karen, which is that they don't have the staff now to to develop or implement some of the additional green coach items. And I wonder if we acknowledge that and say, even if they're not ready now, can we request that we like put that. in a process in place to start the ball rolling, um, to make sure we're not just kicking a can down the road saying, oh, we still don't have staff. Well, we still don't have staff. Right. Of course, we didn't even ask for it. <laughs> um, All right. So, with so that, just... maybe with those two amendments, all right, here's a thought, yeah. and Mel, make sure 
<laughs> this is all proper. Could we could we vote to approve the amendment? No, I'm sorry. Could we vote to approve Christine's draft with two amendments? And we would trust that Christine and Mel could wordsmith those amendments. We don't need to look over their shoulder. We have tr trust and good faith. Those two people can articulate what we've just been talking about. Is, is that? Yeah, you all have done that before. That's totally fine. Yeah, I think we're voting to approve the memo as is and then in, with two uh, amendments conceptually and have Mel and Christine draft those. OK, if everybody's OK with that, all those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? None. I guess I guess we've accomplished something here. You all thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Mel, Christine. Is there anything else we need to talk about or worry about or do? You just have to officially adjourn and then you all are good. Question. Does Mike Thank need to you so much? Do we Go need ahead. To, does Mike need to sign the anything or do we have a signature on this or is it just good from the commission? I believe it's good from the commission. I don't think we did one from the last one. I'll double triple yeah. check and if so, Michael just send you like an e-sign for it. Sure. Cool. Thanks, Logan. Well, again, I can't thank you guys enough. It was the last minute, but I think it's important enough I wanted to get it in. I think we've accomplished something here. So again, and Christine, obviously, thank you for all your work on this. You're the yes, you're the expert, and we, uh, we really appreciate what you're doing. So, have a good evening. I let's move to I move to adjourn. How's that? Yeah. Perfect. Good. Thank you. All right. All right. Good night. Thanks, Take care now. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks,